Well, welcome back to my Ford Transit uh, camper van build, and this time, well, I've got a big box of Chinese writing on, so it can only mean one thing, or actually it could mean lots of things, because I can't read it, but it means I'm installing a Chinese diesel heater today, um, which means I've got to cut another big hole in the bottom of the van. So the reason I've got the Chinese diesel heater is they're very, very popular, <laughs> mainly because they're a lot cheaper than the Western models. For the entire kit, the heater and all the other bits of bobs off eBay, it was £84. I think I wanted to go for one of the, the actual original versions, the European ones, uh, made by a few different brands, that would have been anywhere from £800 to £1,200. And it's a 10% of the price, I'm pretty happy with that. So, let's get this installed. But for what you get for 80 quid, it's pretty good, so... We've got the fuel tank which if you want to use the accelerator one, I'm going to plumb it into the van's tank directly, so I'm not going to use that. You've got mounting plate, instructions in English, interesting uses of English, diesel heater, controller, pump, little Wi-Fi remote, and then a full box of Tubing, plumbing, exhausts, wiring loom, pipes, cables, clamps, screws, everything else. Cool. Right then, let's have a see where I'm going to put it. So I'm looking to have the heater installed here. More or less like that. On the diagonal above this is going to be the fridge. So above it's going to be the fridge. However, the fridge needs a platform to sit on, and that's 16 millimeters. And the height of this is only 13 millimeters. So there should be a nice three 30 mil gap between the top of this and sort of the plinth that the fridge is going to sit on. But there's a bit, there's a cross member here, the van, so I can drill into this area here. I'm going to use the heat from the diesel heater to also heat the water with the assistant I've got, you'll see in a later video. So, because I've got quite a thick floor, I have bought uh, a turret mount for this. The turret mount, basically, it, this is a 127mm hole, and I've got a 127mm hole saw. So I drill all the way through, which is going to go through the, the flooring, the 18mm wood, the 25mm uh, insulation and batten, then the steel work of the van, and out the bottom of the van. And then that nicely isolates all the really hot parts, like the exhaust and the intakes, so they're not going to be touching or getting anything combustible, and a nice sort of air gap to insulate those surrounding areas as well. Well, I guess then we have to go under the van and start measuring. Right, for reference, this is the area I want to be drilling in. This is my 127mm hole saw, that sort of size reference. The kitchen cabinet is against the wheel arch box. So the wheel arch box starts probably around here. So I need to figure out which bit this is. So more or less I know that this is the area underneath where I want the, um, where I can drill into. What I'm going to do is I've marked where on there for a little purple dot where I want the diesel heater to sit. More or less I think it's going to be sit about there. Or maybe I can be able to turn it a little bit. I'm probably going to drill a hole in here. Apparently this only needs a three centimetre gap between it and any surface to function adequately, but I'm probably going to put big hole in there anyway just so it can suck air through the other side of the cupboard. I know that if I drill in there that's not particularly near my um, the uh, that cross member here so what I'm going to do is drill with a pilot hole and then a six mil hole and see where that comes out on the bottom and it gives me a good reference to go off if I know when I line those up underneath with that, 
it doesn't hit the beam, so I know I can just do that through. If not, I can adjust it otherwise. So, actually, pretty good. Let me see if I can line that up. So, oh god, so much crap in my eyes. Right, I don't know if that actually showed it or not. Um, I'm just going to move the hole slightly. It's probably about two centimeters off, being perfect for what I want. That's probably a really horrible nose chin shot. Sorry, guys. Just so you can get an idea if that's very helpful or not. Second hole I've just drilled puts it bang on there, which is away from everything and away from the little lip over seams where this part is spot welded to the chassis. So, time to drill a big hole. Alright, time to drill. The big hole, put an arrow on it to make sure I get the right pilot hole. This is only 38mm deep and my floor is deeper than that so I'm going to have to drill as far as I can probably get. That's not smoke, that's just evaporating WD-40. I don't mean recording. We're through! That hole saw was shit. But there's now a very big hole in the bottom of the van. Right, so although it's a bit of a raggedy hole around the end, what I'm going to do really is just cover it in um, hammerite just to seal the metal back up in a thick coat. Right, it's a new day and we can start getting this assembled. So this is the mount fits in like that, nice and flush, and the heater is going to fit more or less like that. Although it doesn't need it, I put an extra hole here, it just has a, it's a bit easier, because it is going to be, have a, a sort of a piece on top of it for the fridge to sit on. So now I need to figure out all the other bits, because um, I'm plumbing this into the fuel tank for the van, I need to drop the fuel tank of the van. This is what I'm going to work on next. And just so you have an idea of what the underside looks like, I bought one just long enough so it pokes through the bottom and I'll be able to seal that up with sealant. Right, well, um, to plumb this into the fuel tank, I need to access the sender unit which is sort of the access area on top of the fuel tank which means I need to drop it because it's obviously that's right, pressed up right against the floor of the van and I've never dropped the fuel tank on a vehicle before so this should be empty. The van is currently mostly empty, it's got like, uh, probably 18-19 litres of fuel in it so. Good start, the, cap, the axle stands are actually too large <laughs> Right, it's been a few days since the last video because I needed to order a little adapter. So this is the sender unit on top of the fuel tank and this here is the auxiliary fuel port. It's currently sealed up um, but what I did is I bought a little adapter kit, shove it in the frame, which basically means I need to cut the little top of this nib off. It's a very precise level apparently and then thread the pipe in, which is supplied by Ford, and then clip the little clip to it, and that gives it an airtight seal, and then I can run that over where I want. Right, well, I semi-apologize for the crap camera angle. So I've got this little clip, which attaches on here, and I need to make, apparently, a very precise cut 
a cut or the, this flat area here. So anywhere in this flat area, flat area I think it's pretty good. Oh god. There we go. I then need to thread the drinking straw, which is this thing, into it. You're gonna put this little bit of rubber, sorry, this bit of rubber on this and then put your pipe in the end, but unfortunately this is the pipe supplied with the heater. Whilst this is the pipe supplied with the this attachment, so I'm gonna use that. It's a bit of a thinner diameter, hopefully it doesn't cause any issues. If not, I will be dropping the tank again. <sighs> I've made the clippy thing my bother. So this is just, just nicely clip onto here. There we go. Right. Cool. That's that done. Right, so this is the fuel pump. Uh, it's going to be mounted at about a 30 degrees angle. I presume that's so any bubbles in the system rise up. Oh, I don't really make it through the, the filter, so I think I'm just going to plonk it there. Right, I'd have popped around town because I was going to replace the standard green fuel pipe you get with your these like yeah, because it's a bit crap with some similar pro proper stuff just bought from Halfords oh, where's the pump right so I'm gonna wipe the pump there that's the angle to for the second time the pump's now mounted and in. It didn't record the first time. Right, time to start assembly. So apparently it's a lot easier to do all of the fittings and stuff here than it is to try and plumb everything in the hole afterwards. So this is the wiring loom which came with it and I want to access this one. Right, so I need to seal up all the holes, there's a bit of a bit gaps down here and then put the turret back in for it to find them out with loads of sealant around it and around the top. I'm just using a high temperature flexible sealant you shouldn't get too hot with the turret mount because the the idea is that the exhaust doesn't touch the turret mount and keeps it cool, but we'll just put lots in anyway. As per usual, I am making a mess. Right, since I've covered everything in sealant, I decided to I'll stick a black, black bag over this. Sort of ceiling getting all over the uh, pipes I'm about to go work with. Well, that's all sealed up around there. Now it's time to start playing around with the rigging up all this stuff. Minor mistake. This needs to be angled, but the other way, which is fine because all I need to do. This is it's currently pissing at our rain. Obviously, and uh, this is my temporary rig up. So the minute this ends here, I'm going to get an extension bit of this so I can run this further back and out front of the vehicle. I didn't want to run this under here because I wonder if it's the wind, if it's still or a wind, it's going to it's going to rise up into into the air filter. So I'm going to run it a bit further back. Right, I've run the exhaust. Now, I don't know if I'm massively happy with it, if I'm honest with you. Uh, the extension I bought was only an extra 
50 centimeters. I might look for another one. At the minute, it is venting downwards and out. I don't know if I'm massively happy with how this runs over the, the rear spring. There's still plenty much of a gap. And this pipe is higher than, I think it's the jounce bumper there. So there's actually no chance, even if I really hit the, the rear axle, that this spring would depress and hit that. Um, so it's not massively idea. I might change it in the future. I still would like, quite like to run it further back out the back. But for the minute, for now, that's going to do. I've also replaced and bought some of these P clips here with nice little rubber edges just to protect the, protect the fuel line. And I've gone for cable tying them in place opposed to screwing and putting more holes into the chassis. If I put holes into the chassis here, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to protect the raw metal on the other side, so I'd rather just use um, cable ties for now. Well, it's absolutely tipping it down now, so I've currently come inside and well, I'm gonna give it a quick test. I'm gonna rig it up to one of my older batteries. Haven't decided yet how I'm gonna completely wire everything in. So it's gonna hook it up to one of my AGMs instead. So before we get it um, to actually fire up, we need to prime the fuel line, which means we need to pull, get the pump to pull the fuel from the tank all the way through into the unit. And uh, I've just looked it up and I think I've got to press OK and down. As for priming, then hit up. I can hear the pump ticking away. So the minute this is all ticking away, we're just waiting for this to pull the fuel all the way through, which might take a while. Just had a thought that I um, oh, so I could drop the fuel tank. I waited till there was absolutely almost no fuel left in the vat in the fuel tank. So I'm thinking actually it's not picking up any fuel because there isn't any to pick up. Is diesel. <laughs> well, I manually primed it, and yeah, diesel wasn't through just almost about. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to turn this on. Right, so, well, so as you might notice, there's a work top. Don't worry, you will get to see that in an upcoming video. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically repay, replace the original power wiring loom from the diesel heater. The reason being not because it's particularly undersized, because I'm running it a little bit further, they're particularly susceptible, susceptible to voltage drop. And although it's been working fine, and I'm sure it will, I'm just going to replace the factory, or a good chunk of the factory wire, with 6mm opposed to whatever this is, which feels for the like 2 or something. Uh, with the Tony Steelzer heaters, it's important not to, well, it's recommended not to wire them to your fuse box and wire them directly to your battery. That being, you don't want to accidentally turn off the power to them because if, when they shut down, they go through a cool down sequence where effectively the engine's off but the fan's still running for a few minutes to cool down the rest of the equipment, otherwise you're going to end up melting the board in there. So having it sort of going directly to your battery does mean you're not going to um, potentially turn it off or cut the power to it whilst it's running and then damage it. It does however mean that you're not going to be able to, um, if you leave it on it could, could potentially drain your battery. This only stops functioning about I think it's like 10.7 volts which is way too low for my battery so I'm going to look at a different solution um, to sort of protect the uh, batteries if I leave that on and it drains it too much. Just so everyone's aware I have put the uh, the inline fuse back in, and yeah, it is going back from that six mil down to that thinner one. But we're not. I'm not worried about there being too much current drawn through the wire. I'm more worried about that the wire isn't thick enough to have voltage drop throughout the course of a long wire being too thin. So the fact that I'm dropping down isn't really an issue. But now I can flip switch the switch and turn it back on again. That's now turned on. Right, we're also going to open the Victronat as I'm quite interested to see how much power the it uses. Right, so I'm going to plug, put the fuse back in. 
gonna put the fuse in and we're gonna see how much it just uses on standby. So just on standby, it looks like it uses two watt. Uh, let's turn it on. So I imagine it's gonna use quite a decent amount of electricity, or to take a decent amount of ampage to get it started. Be interested to see how much it actually uses when it's just up and going. So the minute it's using seven and a half amps, and that's the glow plug on. Right here in the background, that's the pump going. So it's now glow plugs heated up. It's now pumping fuel into the uh, engine. Just remember that is the battery temperature, not the um, anything to do with the heater. And then the glow plugs are switched off, and it's dropped the, uh, the amount of amps being used. So we're going to wait for it to get up to uh, its full height, uh, full temperature on there and then we'll turn it off and see how much down the power down cycle we'll using. I'll leave it another few minutes but they're sort of stabilised at 1.8 amps, 25 watt. Right, it seems pretty happy there so let's um, turn it off. So the shutdown cycle takes quite a lot of um, Power, it seems. It's got the glow plug currently on, I don't know why, I don't know if it's cleaning it or something like that. Glow plug's gone off now. The fan's picked up, presumably just to help cool down the unit itself. There we go, it's now completely off. Back down to its standby usage. So that pretty much concludes the setup of the, the heater, apart from one crucial bit of safety equipment, which if you're installing a diesel heater, be that Chinese one or one of the, you know, the high quality Western ones, I recommend installing, or definitely not recommend you do it, uh, a carbon monoxide detector or, or, and mine is a smoke detector as well. Because although the exhaust from the actual engine bit and the heater bit is, is outside, I don't know, there could be a potential leak for some reason in the future, but rather I was woken up by uh, this going off and saving my life, they're not waking up at all. So definitely install a carbon monoxide detector. Most people are going to have, should have one anyway, because if they've got good cooking in their van, it's just something you should definitely do. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. One other thing is, I'm going to be replacing this unit with an afterburner, and that sounds quite exotic. It is actually. It's not like an afterburner for a jet, but it's an afterburner that an Australian guy has made a aftermarket control unit uh, which plugs especially for Chinese diesel heaters. And as long as it's got a compatible one of these controllers, you can you just plug it in here and that controls your uh, diesel heater instead. And the reason I want that is one, I can access lots of things like controlling it via Wi Fi, adjusting every single setting, timers, loads and loads of different things. But yeah. So once again, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions, find me on Instagram and shoot me some messages over there. And yeah, I'll see you next time. And we'll do a video for the afterburner as well. Cheers. Bye.